We can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking another turn on the what if highway, similar to our recent episode about chakras. This time though, we're getting real sci-fi. We're talking warp engines, teleportation, and time travel kind of stuff. At the risk of triggering some Einstein enthusiasts or Neil deGrasse Tyson, well, scientist discretion is advised. Let's talk about the speed of light and more specifically, what, if anything, is faster than it? To begin, this episode was inspired by an early Joe Rogan podcast where he featured Dr. Stephen Greer, the founder of CSETI, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, as well as the Disclosure Project. He's a man who has brought to light over 4,000 cases of UFO landings and over 3,500 pilot cases of UFO sightings and over 500 reports of whistleblowers from military and government officials reporting on both UFOs as well as ET encounters, including over 100 of these reports on videotape. And on a completely side note, Joe, if you're watching, please bring Dr. Greer back on your show. Anyways, what he described in this podcast is that all of these ETs who are visiting the planet, and they're definitely real by the way, are not coming here in methods that are within the confines of the speed of light or slower, because it would take millennia to actually travel across the universe at these abysmally slow speeds. They're actually moving faster than light, somehow. Now he explains that after passing the speed of light, it's an entirely different and new kind of physics, different than anything we currently know. While the prevalence of light being the fastest thing has been experimentally proven by our current model of physics, if there are aspects of the universe that are unseen by us and based in undiscovered laws, then perhaps the belief of light above all is limiting us from perceiving an even greater truth. The constant interpretation of people looking at this information, saying it's debunked and then ridiculing it is actually holding us back socially and technologically. In one particular moving section of this interview, Stephen explains that at one time, he sat down with the CIA director's family and the director's wife asked him, well, how are they getting here? Referring to the aliens. And he answered that they have this advanced technology that interfaces between thought and consciousness. He describes that just like crossing the sound barrier was a big deal, the light barrier is going to be an even bigger deal. And when we do, we are going to cross into these sort of multiphasic resonant dimensions, part of which hook into the singularity of mind and thought. The CIA director's wife looked at him with wide eyes and just went, wow, I knew it had to be something like that. And it was right then, in that moment, that I decided we had to make this video. Part of the challenge of understanding the faster than light conundrum is getting to know the initial problem in the first place. And why do scientists believe that there's nothing faster? To quote Neil deGrasse Tyson in his book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, we find the following. Among all constants, the speed of light is the most famous. No matter how fast you go, you will never overtake a beam of light. Why not? No experiment ever conducted has ever revealed an object of any form reaching the speed of light. Well-tested laws of physics predict and account for that fact. I know these statements sound closed-minded, some of the most boneheaded science-based proclamations in the past have underestimated the ingenuity of inventors and engineers. We will never fly. Flying will never be commercially feasible. We will never split the atom. We will never break the sound barrier. We will never go to the moon. What they have in common is that no established law of physics stood in their way. The claim we will never outrun a beam of light is a qualitatively different prediction. It flows from basic time-tested physical principles. Highway signs for interstellar travelers of the future will justifiably read, the speed of light, it's not just a good idea, it's the law. To actually get into the science of light and the whole deal here is honestly a whole video on its own. But basically the speed of light is this curious property of light where it travels at a particular speed, no matter what. Even if you were flying a spaceship at half the speed of light and had headlights in front of the ship, that light would still travel at the speed of light, no faster measured from any perspective moving or not. As Neil wrote, no modern physics experiment has ever found any evidence of anything moving faster. But then again, as Stephen Greer described, on the other side of that barrier may be an entirely different kind of physics. Perhaps we don't even have the tools to measure the mysteries beyond that barrier. With a new kind of physics, perhaps we get into a more quantum understanding of the universe again. 
being able to move forwards and backwards through time and leap massive distances through space that would be impossible on this side of the light speed barrier. So, okay, maybe there is some way that is beyond our understanding on how to move through this faster than light dimension, which of course opens the doors of curiosity for all of us. But then the question becomes, what else is out there? A very big question in science right now is concerned with the mysterious cosmic substances, dark matter and dark energy. Could these mysterious things virtually undetectable to us besides that they produce gravity be waiting for us on the other side of the light barrier? Now, what's especially curious about this is that we find a link to the mysteries of dark matter and energy in a place that you might not expect, the work of Dr. Rick Strassman, PhD. This is a man who has pioneered psychedelic research for all of us in a profound way with his work with DMT, which he coined the spirit molecule, leading to the publishing of his book and movie of the same name. In his writings, he challenges all conventional thinking about science, consciousness, and dimensions with some absolutely profound and groundbreaking research, which any scientist today should take special note of because of the implications of his incredible studies. Over the course of several years, Rick led the expedition to administer several hundred doses of DMT to participants in a study to see if there were any clinical benefits of using DMT. What the study revealed, however, opened up a wormhole of possibilities that could potentially change our understanding of ourselves and the universe forever. Over and over, Rick's participants all experienced these incredible psychedelic voyages that often included seeing environments and realms that were outside of what could physically exist in our universe or meeting alien beings in many sizes and shapes who interacted with the participants. Rick tried over and over to rationalize this for the conventional thinking says that psychedelics simply reveals in your mind what is already within you. But enough participants reported meeting the same or similar beings that seemed outlandish to think that these experiences were all just happening inside of people's heads. Not only did the research suggest that the participants consciousness was actually being taken to another dimension of sorts, meeting beings who are not from the same plane that we exist in, but the participants also said the exact same thing. They claimed definitively that this was not an experience isolated within them, but they knew without a shadow of a doubt that they actually met these other beings for real. To any scientist who outright denies this suggestion, I challenge you to go exploring with plant medicine in a sacred and ceremonial way. I know Rhythmia will take you and see if you feel the same way after. That's not to say that psychedelics are exclusively a cosmic and external experience, but that it seems to open you up for conscious expansion, both internally and externally in both this dimension and others. The reason that I bring all this up is because Dr. Strassman describes this may even relate with the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy. Aha, you see, we've come full circle. In DMT, the spirit molecule, he wrote the following. The strangest realms to which DMT might lead are those that exist within the mysterious realms of dark matter. There, which may indeed be here, no one knows what we will find. Dark matter comprises at least 95% of this universe's mass. In other words, nearly all of the matter in the universe is invisible. We cannot see it. It neither generates nor reflects radiation of any type, visible or otherwise. The only way we know it is there is by its gravitational effects. It must exist by virtue of the fact that the visible universe maintains its particular shape. Without this mass, there would not be enough gravity to hold the universe together. It would fly apart. Scientists have nominated several candidates for the stuff that comprises dark matter. Normal matter that radiates little or no light, Planets, dead or unborn stars, and black holes may account for about 20% of dark matter. However, it's likely that most, if not all, dark matter consists of particles quite different from our familiar protons, electrons, and neutrons. These black particles may obey entirely different laws of physics, unlike those in parallel universes. Finding ourselves in a world comprised of them, we most likely would not recognize much. Either of these invisible levels of existence parallel universes or dark matter are present at the same time as this reality. Thus, they both are options we must consider for where DMT takes us when our consciousness is no longer in this plane of existence. The immediacy of the transition makes appealing these two alternate viewpoints regarding the incredibly unusual places our volunteers describe. This is because they're as much here as there. So the question about inside versus outside, as many volunteers posed it, really no longer has any meaning. Before performing the DMT research, I never would have suggested that familiarity with alien abduction phenomena would be important in providing the best possible supervision for these sessions. However, 
I do now. I also believe it's helpful to know everything about current theories regarding invisible realms like dark matter and parallel universes. Equipped with these types of training and experiences, research scientists and staff will be ready to understand, accept, and react to nearly everything that might come up during deep psychedelic sessions. And so bringing things to a close, we must strive to answer the question from the beginning. What, if anything, can go faster than light? It seems that with certain technology, perhaps even physical objects can, as we've seen with the stories of the ships. But as far as our own bodies and minds go, at least what Dr. Strassman has discovered, it seems very possible that even if our bodies are limited here, perhaps consciousness is the one thing that permeates everywhere, including beyond the speed of light, perhaps at least with some help from a little bit of DMT that is. I feel with all of this information, the biggest thing for me is that when scientists make definitive statements about absolutes in the universe, the proper response seems to be healthy skepticism. That there are so many mysteries in the cosmos that it seems arrogant to suggest that we understand everything perfectly, especially when the standard model, quantum mechanics, and even gravity are incomplete and do not fully connect with each other. Especially with the work of some of these great people we've discussed today, it would seem as though there's something going on to suggest not only that there's another reality waiting for us beyond the light barrier, but that we may even be naturally equipped to explore these realms within us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.